It's a chilly, damp day here in uh, in Ohio. I'm about to head out and go over to uh, go over to the meadows in a minute. We have some horses racing there today. Yo, Mister Marching Fourth, Tenacious Hanover, all race at the meadows today. Uh, Three Point Blue Chip is in Dayton. Spitfire is also in Dayton, and then Tech Song Soprano is going to round out our night at 7:35. He races at the Meadowlands. Now, yesterday we had a pretty good day. I would say a a uh, a pretty good day. Uh, Pickpocket raced well to finish third. Just beat in 55. Good looking call. Um. Ready for landing, raced adequately. Did he race fantastic? No, I don't think he raced fantastic, but he raced adequately. I just see some of the horses jogging. Here. There's perfect thought right there. Look quiet. No, that's not one of ours. The horse that caught my eye on the track a little while ago has had to know. My God, he's got a nice gait. Anyway, uh, ready for landing, raced pretty good. Greatest ending was okay. Patrick DePrana raced very good, kind of weaving through, trying to get through late. Jason and I were just talking about where he should race his next start. Does he go back to the Meadows? The only problem with the Meadows, and I told Jason this, was they didn't fill that non-winners in 9,000. It didn't fill next week. So do we wait for that class to fill? Or we can call a little bit of an audible. Patrick DePrana can go in the class. Save America drops down. Patrick DePrano would actually have to win a class above that for him to get in at Dayton, uh, which I th think he'll be fine. I mean, Patrick DePrano will pace 50-51 in Dayton, I believe, and he's sharp as attack. I really like the way he finished up his mile yesterday, so I'm, I'm more uh, I'm leaning more towards entering in Dayton, which draws tomorrow, rather than waiting to enter in the Meadows on Tuesday for Friday. Now, if... Uh, if he is not going to get in, we have options also. Our options are as is. We can race him at the Meadows on Friday, which enters Tuesday morning. Also entering Tuesday morning would be a class at Mohawk. Now, I don't want to leave Patrick DePrana in Mohawk very long. I believe he should be at Dayton or the Meadows, but I do want to make sure he stays on a schedule of racing. He doesn't mind the shipping. He ships three and a half hours to Dayton when he races, so... Five hours to Ontario is certainly not going to bother him. Now, we wouldn't do it on race day. We'd send him over a couple of days before. But uh, those are options. Obviously, we have an option to race him here at Northfield. But, you know, Northfield, uh, here's that colt. Right? Ah, doesn't really give you a true look that he looks on the track. Good looking trotter, though. Um, um, but I do want to get Patrick to prone race. So... Uh, he could race at Northfield. The classes are tough here. Full of half-mile track type horses. Now, Patrick will get around a half. He gets around a half well, but not quite as well as he gets around Dayton. Not quite as well as he gets around some of the other ones. The yeah, I got to go today. Ah, uh, no. That's a hard no. Oh, in, in Brunswick? Oh, Oh, perfect. Thank you very you much. You want, you want the lodge? I said, pretty pricey, wasn't it? Uh, it can be, yeah. It was good, but it's pricier yeah. hell. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, because I've, I've lived out there for years. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I always talk about people, nice people, all right? That guy just pulled over and told me he was going to give me some restaurants, names of restaurants in the area we've moved out to. It's very nice. Um, so, Patrick DePrano, we have options with him. Dayton, uh, the Meadows, Mohawk, and if all fails, if we just decide that none of the above is going to work, then we can obviously go to our home track right here at Northfield Park. He qualified, he come 27 seconds here. He gets around Northfield. It's not a place you'd want to race a horse turning 10 full-time, half-mile track. It's just not uh, ideal uh, for full-time racing, but certainly here and there and everywhere, it's certainly not going to bother him at all. Captain Incredible, I was very, very happy with Captain Incredible yesterday. Um... I had delivered the message to all our clients this morning, again yesterday in a, in a video, but in an email today just saying he's gone to the field. I just didn't feel he was ready to go to the Governor's Cup, and there's nothing wrong with that. When you go to the Governor's Cup, you are at your best, you know, you're putting your best foot forward, right? Your horse is prepared 
Um, he is sound. He is healthy. He is ready to go. He can be at 105% on race night. And I just don't think that we can get Captain there. He was great yesterday. Horse was smart. As I, as I mentioned in the video, to understand how smart he raced yesterday, how calm and cool and collected he was for horse racing, first time on a 5 8 mile track. He sure he qualified there, he trained there, but this was his first start on a smaller track. For him to do what he did in the way he did it just showed intelligence beyond what, what I thought he was capable of at this point. So I was really, really impressed with Patrick the Piranha yesterday. Now, last night, Save America raced well. Uh, that horse came at him. I, I really thought, and I think, uh, I think Austin did too, that uh, that horse that was coming to him was a threat. And when he pulled the earplugs on, out and dropped the hammer at that point, he put him away rather quickly, but he wasn't the only danger. And I think that Save America kind of, you know, dropped the hammer just, just a little too early. But I think anybody would have done the same thing. I thought he drove the horse great, and I thought the horse raced well. Hang on. Yeah, he hung on for third, and he raced really well. I think, what, they go 50-51 or something. But he's an open horse there. But he now gets to drop down two classes, which is a feather in our cap. I thought Admiral Dio raced good again. The race last night was not what's important. It will be the entry box for next week. If he does not come out on Thursday, he will be shipping to Pennsylvania immediately. There'll be no more of this racing every two weeks. You know, the first time I said, oh, it's not, it's not ideal, but it's okay, I guess. The second week, I'm like, this is a little frustrating. The third week, enough's enough. And if he doesn't get in, if he doesn't get in next week, he is heading to Pennsylvania. Uh, Rock Shining Star raced good. He gets to drop way down now, kind of in a tough spot, you know. And that first over grind into a into a, a pretty strong pace is not ideal. It's not easy to sustain. And Rock Shining Star did all he could, but finished a a okay fifth but gets to drop way down in class now also. So a bit of a transition week. We have a lot of horses dropping down in class. Uh, looking for classes for other horses to race in, but for the most part, a decent day top to bottom. Pickpocket, as I said, was was good. Ready for landing was okay. Much the same as Greatest Ending and um, Rock Shining Star, just kind of present. Uh, Patrick DeProna was was as good a sixth as you can be, uh, kind of weaving through looking for, for room. Captain Incredible was great. Save America was good, and, and Admiral Deal raced good as well. As I said today, we have Yo Mister marching four, three point blue chip, Tenacious Hand over Spitfire, and Tech Song Soprano. A good lineup for our uh, Friday. According to our uh, calendar, we don't have any racing on Saturday. I have none either. So, Amy, uh, Amy's best friend is, is Jenna McDonnell, very, very good, uh, good friend of hers. And she ended up with tickets to Taylor Swift in uh, Ontario. So Amy goes back to Ontario today. We're loose tomorrow. The McDonald family minus mummy is loose tomorrow. We're going to go do something. I would imagine Addie will talk me into the jumping place at some point. Uh, Ollie will want to go do something fun. And Ava will want to go to the mall. Maybe we'll get it all done tomorrow. After morning, afternoon, and night. Tomorrow we have to train a bunch of horses here. Uh, Jason is... Uh, sent me over a schedule of horses to train. Uh, Steve's horse that he had just bought. Um, Denali Dio is training. Mel Gibswan is going to train tomorrow. I'm going to train Century Legion again, my wicked heart. And um, uh, Trevino on green, amongst others, and go with some babies. So it'll be a busy morning for me. And then, uh, and then we're loose for the rest of the day. Now, as it comes to... I'll give you a quick update, actually, uh, now that I have you here. Just a, a really, really quick update of everything going on in the stable. So top to bottom, alphabetical order. If I miss a horse, I can't help it. Doing the best I can. Uh, we're going to start with Aunt Sarah. Aunt Sarah is on the track right now, actually, is Aunt Sarah. She looks good. I, I guess, let me skip. I'll skip through the babies quick. Blue Rare, there are, there's no issues. There's Aunt Sarah. Ah, uh, you're not going to see much of her right there. Can't see much of Aunt Sarah right there. Um... All the horses are broke. All the horses are jogging. We'd like to get uh, another video day in next week. Now that we've had the horses broke for a week, they're gated for the most part. The pacers aren't, but the trotters are trotting. It might be uh, beneficial to bring you a video next week, and that's what we will try and do. Uh, my count right now, uh, homebreds, purchases, horses sent to us, I believe is exactly at 50. I don't believe uh, Steve's filly is on here. She's going to have to be added also. Uh, Elisa Hanover is her name. I think we're right at 50. 
right at 50, which is a little higher than I thought we'd get, but that is that. Now, let's get to the two-year-olds, through the rest of the horses. I'm going to give you a quick update on everybody. Ali Scott Grit has two more starts. A lot of people asking, what are we doing with these horses? I believe both these horses can race in overnights. Are we going to hold them over the winter, through the spring, into the summer, into the fall next year? Probably not. I can't imagine that they'll both be in our care by the time we get to October of next year for Hawthorne's meet. Uh, but we'll see. Both horses are decent horses. They both have two races left. I thought that the finals were the final. It was just, just assumed that they were. But apparently there's two more races left for both Alley's Got Great and What a Lady, What a Night. What happens after? I don't know yet. Arrowhead Hanover will be coming back in. Everybody's coming back. Everybody that went out sound and healthy is coming back in at six weeks. I had a lot of people messaging me saying, Anthony, I think 8, 10, 12. Let me be as clear as I can. Every horse is coming back at six weeks. We'll train them down. Now, a horse like Arrowhead Hanover has like five wins, I think. Likely won't start until March. We'll train them down, get them ready, evaluate them, see how they are, and then maybe give them a few more weeks or a couple more weeks in the field. At that point, I don't mind doing that. But they're not standing around in a field for eight to ten weeks. It's just not happening at all. So Arrowhead Hanover will be coming back in, uh, I think, before Christmas. Arrowhead Hanover will be back in. Uh, same with Aunt Lily also. Bluebird Tuxedo Hill is training down right now. Blue Ventura is training down right now, both in Ontario. I'm going to send a message to Harry just say I want an update on everybody in the barn, him and Dominic, uh, today if possible. Uh, Cadeau, it looks good. Starting to put that weight back on, getting a little more muscled up and looking good. We'll start training him. I might go a slow mile with him tomorrow actually. Uh, Captain Incredible gone to the field now, as I said, six weeks off for him. Century Legion trained good. You know, I had a great conversation with, with one of uh, my partners on Century Legion, Daryl. Uh, really nice guy. Off and on, we had horses for well, 10, 15 years. Um, always been a, a good guy. and A little hesitant to race here in Ohio. A little hesitant to race horses in the States. But as I said, I just I want to give the horse the best start to his sophomore sophomore season that I can and just pigeonholing him and saying we're going to train you down we're going to race you at Mohawk I don't I don't think that's the best for him or many other horses having an opportunity to race in maybe softer classes at Northfield or the Meadows where they do race for good money as much almost as much as they're going to race for at Mohawk with a much watered down a much more watered down field makes much more sense to me and when it comes to Century Legion I too didn't know if he'd get around here I guess I don't really know until we put him in the race bike um, which will be uh, probably within the next month. But I trained him on Tuesday. I thought the horse trained very, very good at uh, Northfield Park. Never put a step in. Was very strong. A little headstrong, maybe, which is fine. Um, I, I'm going to train him again tomorrow. But I was really happy with what I saw from Century Legion. Chicago Hall, again, I'm toying with the idea of bringing him over here, too. Keep in mind, um, he's a maiden also. There's Kudo right there. As they say his name, he walks on the track. Um, Chicago Hall also is a maiden, but he's a maiden over here. I, I would suspect you're going to see him start at the Meadows. He could train down very well and maybe start at Mohawk. I have no problem doing that. But a fresh scenery, a fresh everything for, uh, for the start of his 2025 campaign or his sophomore season would be important. And I think that's what we're probably leaning towards with Chicago Hall. Country dancing, the opposite. She's in Ontario right now. Training with Dominic. I thought she was at Harry's Barn. Harry's Barn was a little full. Um, so he, him and Nelly opted to uh, keep um, Leggy. She's uh, over there right now. She's going to join Harry's Barn. And Dominic is going to keep country dancing. Now, both of those horses, I believe, can be Mohawk horses when they start back. So I'm interested to see how things are going to play out with country dancing and with Leggy. Dancing by myself again. Very fast horse. Dominic said the same thing. I trained him the other day. He said, geez, he seems like a really fast colt. He said, he is. He is a fast colt. He said he didn't put any steps in. He was good getting around uh, the 5 eights. Perfect. That's what I want to hear. Um, Fire and Shine will be coming back in another two weeks. She'll be back with us. Uh, as will... Nope. Gaslight Hall. I'm going to give Ed Gaslight Hall the eight weeks. Remember what I said. Six weeks, the horses that were sound and healthy went out. Gaslight Hall has been sound forever. Forever. So he's probably going to get the full eight weeks off. We'll bring him back in and train him back down. Again, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he fits in almost a two everywhere, which is good. I, I could see that horse going back to Mohawk just because bigger, easier track on his knees. Um, 
you know, understanding what his issues are and working on them from day one when he comes in, I think will will play very, very well to Gaslight Hall. Uh, gorgeous package again back in. I'm super excited to race this filly next year. I think, I don't know where we're going to be able to race her right away though because she has a tick, and I mean just a tick under 100 grand US made and and four parimutuel wins if I'm not mistaken. So I have no idea where we're going to start her. Um or when we'll start her. Quite frankly, if I have a horse like Arrowhead Hanover, a gorgeous package with four or five wins and uh, a lot of money made, I'm not just going to put them in to go just to say, well, I guess they're racing. No, no. They're going to race with purpose. So it'll either be a stake race in March. Arrowhead Hanover does not fit that, obviously. So it'll either be train him down, get him ready, and then turn him back out for two, three weeks and get him ready for his stakes. Uh, but I'm not going to put him in to say, well, he's in, and then watch him go on the track at 20 to 1 and get his face beat in. That's not going to happen. So um, the six weeks isn't to get them ready and racing right away. The six weeks is because I, I firmly believe they don't need any more time than six weeks off. And when we get them ready, and it looks like things are going to be tough for the first little while, I'll just turn them back out for another couple of weeks. Um, grand old chap. I plan on training him tomorrow too. We made a tiny little shoeing adjustment again with him. And I know I had one of our clients saying, Anthony, you keep saying it with the little adjustments here and there, but when's it going to come to racing? I, I will counter that with he's two. And if even if I get him almost ready, just like I did with Al, and turn him out again, well then that's what I'll do. I need to make sure that the horses are ready to go properly. Not just ready to go, because nobody wants to see your horse go out there. Nobody wants to see your horse go out and watch and finish up the track. Right now, I know everybody says, no, I just want to see him race. No, you don't. You want to see him race competitively. Everybody does. And when it comes to Chap, as I've said time and time again, since we got him back this time, I think Chap, there's a racehorse in there. He's already gone, shown fleckers and glimmers of racehorse speed, and I don't have any issues with, with grand old Chap at all. So he'll train probably. I would like to see him train in 212 tomorrow. That would be nice. If he gets to 13 or 14, that's fine too. I want him to trot good tomorrow and then we'll see how grand old chap is moving forward you're going to have to give him a wide berth if you look at how bad he was when we broke him and trained him down till what april or may and then how good he was when he came back in comparison to that just give the horse some time um grand slam deal again six weeks she'll be back in jim Barry, same thing that six weeks high high hope starts training tomorrow she came back in his jog for three weeks and now we'll start training tomorrow in ontario i don't play nice same thing he'll start training tomorrow i'm a trucker's been in 217 it's a long way from the 218 he was in last week um i'm ready to will be qualifying this week whether he qualifies who is that i know exactly who that is that right there is uh, Sweeney's sister. I'll give you a little look at her when she comes back around. My goodness. Um, I'm ready to qualify. Leggy is now in Ontario. She started, uh, she's been training, so she'll continue to train at Harry's Barn. Manhattan Money also, I believe, is at Harry's Barn. He should start training soon. Melisandre, I just started training her the other day. She'll train again tomorrow. Uh, Memento Mori, he'll probably get the seven weeks, right? He's got money made, although he only has three wins. So he may just get the six weeks, actually, now that I say it. But he only stopped racing two weeks ago, so he's still got at least four weeks left. Um, did she get that filly ready yet? That's her there? Oh. That's actually Pickpocket Sister out there, okay? Give you a look at her. When she comes by, she'll be the filly with the red bandages on behind. The other filly is over there. I'll get you this one first. Um, Mountaineer Prince is ready to come back in at any time. I just asked Jacob to make sure he's put some weight on behind before he sends him back in. Um, my Wicked Heart, I'll be training her tomorrow. She will be ready. She will race. So qualify and race before the sale on the 17th. I can assure you of that. Never Lose Felix is training now, but in 225, I think, in Ontario. As has O'Hill No. Who's that one? Um, Pelican Al, just going to give him three weeks. Two and a half, three weeks out in the field. Just to relax. He was a little bit sick. Uh, Jason said he didn't train great the last time he trained him. He was rather weak. So we're going to give him a little bit of time off. Um... 
Resolve indeed. There she is there. There's pickpocket sister. Ah, these are terrible videos. I'm sorry. But I'm just not getting out of the car. It's raining. <laughs> um, who's it talking about here? I'm going to pull this back up. Um, uh, where did I leave you? My Wicked Heart, I believe. Kicks me out. I gotta get Eric to make this like half an hour or 45 minutes. Kicks me out exactly at 10 minutes. Um, doo -doo -doo. Resolve a deed. She'll be back in. I'm gonna bring her over here for sure. She's gonna come to Ohio at some point. Uh, at six week mark. When they come back in at six weeks, she'll come over here. Rosa and AJ is back in now jogging. Um, and Jason's end. Uh, Rosa and Alexandra will come back in in another two weeks, I guess. We'll bring her back in. Um, Rosetta is back in now jogging at the barn. Now she sits at the bar. Still not 100% sound every single day. So two things have to happen. She, well, three things have to happen. The first thing is she has to come back into the barn. We'll get her back in soon. The second thing is the veterinarian has to go over her completely. Um, obviously going to start with that left front. Tell me about the left front. Tell me about the injury you see under ultrasound and x-ray. And, and tell me how you expect it to look in another three weeks with work. I will put it, will likely put it, if the vet says you can jog her and see how she is, she might come around. The reason I say this, and I'm not, I'm saying it very vaguely, Lover's Play never should have raced again, ever, with the injury she had. So I'm interested to see how, um, she said, totally different injuries, by the way. So I, I, it's a very, another very rare injury when it comes to um, when it comes to this filly, so I, I don't know how it looks under ultrasound or X-ray right now. If we get the green light and we start going with her, is she going to sound up under under rehab, constant rehab with us, or is she always going to have that component of lameness? If it's the latter, then I'm leaning towards probably breeding her in March, and, and for obvious reasons, her brother's a sire at Hanover Shoe Farms right now. There's no reason not to breed her. Makes all the sense in the world, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I don't know what Amy has out there. Oh, she's got her filly out there. Uh, sh uh, what's her name? Pretty Eyes and Lies. Uh, Sithwin Idex is training out okay. I imagine he's lazy in Ontario. Is he going to, is his pedigree and his competitiveness going to kind of snap into gear when he comes up in behind the gate and he starts training and schooling? I don't know. He's been training. He's been in 220. I think I trained him here in 2.5 or 2.6 before we turned him out. So there's a horse in there. But his will to do his work, his work ethic is in question. He's not sour, but he is lazy. But he is a well-bred lazy horse. So is that going to dissipate as he gets into those schooling and racing sets? I don't know. We'll see. Um... Speed of Sound is training better now and looks good. Torino on Green will train here tomorrow. We'll ima I imagine we'll start making shoeing adjustments with Torino on Green. He didn't train bad here the other day. I'll go with him tomorrow and we'll see how he trains. Um, Westland Warrior will come back in at that six-week mark and get ready again. He only has one lifetime win, so he'll fit the Meadows for sure when he comes back. Uh, what a lady, what a night. As I said with the start, the bookends of our two-year-olds. Uh, no, that's not true. Woodmere bet you it's the bookend. But what a lady, what a night. Same as Allie's got grit. Uh, they have those two races left. Maybe, quite frankly, if they race good this week, maybe I put them on on gate. Somebody else in, in Illinois wants to race them in the last stake race and then carry them over to 2025. That's a possibility also. We'll see uh, what we decide after this race. And Woodmere Betcha is getting ever so closer to qualifying in Prince Edward Island. Now, the three-year-old's arrest is a very short list. Uh, Admiral Deal raced good last night. I was happy with him. The only important thing from here on out, especially uh, next week, is him getting in. If he does not get in next Thursday, he will be on a truck to the Meadows immediately. Uh, Arson is coming back uh, to Northfield Park in about a week. We'll get him back up here in training and then decide where does Arson go? Dayton, the Meadows. I guess here, although if I wasn't going to send him to Yonkers, why would I keep him at Northfield? I don't know. I guess nothing. I guess the easiest way to put it is I have a list of tracks and jurisdictions that I'm feeling for Arson, but everything is on the table for Arson moving forward. 
Casanova Hall. We opted to not race him in Dayton next week, but race him here back in the class. He dominated two starts in a row. So he will uh, be in that 30 condition claimer at Northfield with the full intention of bringing him back to Dayton uh, after that. Uh, Drebin is in Ontario. He'll race next Friday. He's schooling this morning at Mohawk. We'll see how everything goes with Drebin. George of the Jungle is in. I was going to skip this week, and then I thought, what if he didn't get in on points? And, and you know, virtually it boiled down to how he jogged yesterday. Jason said the horse jogged well in the morning, therefore he put him in. We'll see how that plays out, but I'll check in again with Jason and the veterinarian today on George of the Jungle. Hallie in the Clouds is at the sale facility right now, prepping for the sale. She's got a full month. Um, Robert Hirschberger, who, who uh, runs Dublin Valley Farms, is, is just around the corner from where the sale will be. I was talking to him in Harrisburg. He said, yeah, we can take them and prep them. So both really don't care. And uh, Hallie and the Clouds are at the facility right now at Dublin Valley Farms. I'm fancy like Drew the eight hole again. I'd love to let her step off the car this week. I just don't know what's sitting to the left of me. And I won't know till I, what I pick the program up. And truthfully, the program doesn't even matter. I won't know until they're about to let us go behind the gate. When I look left, if there's three noses on the gate and five looking around, I'm probably going to scoot out of there with her. But we'll see how that plays out on Sunday evening. Insider trading coming off a good win. She has to go back to the Meadows now. There's not really anything here for her. That non of four is a little deeper than the non of one. Or the non of three but five or two but four fillies and mares in, uh, in the Meadows. So we'll see how that plays out. I mean, and truthfully, I, as I told a couple of breeders, she should bring 45. So putting her in the, the 30 claimer where she's her claiming tag is 52,000 really isn't that concerning to me. If that's what it comes to, we'll do that. But we've opted to go down the route of the Meadows next week, first and foremost. Uh, Irresistible Sun is back in the barn. Put some weight on. Looks good. I'm excited to race him. La Dorian has been entered for Northfield. I was going to take her over to the Meadows, but I don't want to risk her not going. Class didn't go last week in the meadow so I don't want to risk her not getting in we'll see if she gets in here at Northfield I think a bad track and broken equipment is hard to judge her on I do agree that she maybe races a little bit better at the meadows but the class she fits here is infinitely cheaper than the one she fits at the meadows also so a bit of a, a tough decision but we opted for her here lovers play will race the same night um, Wednesday <laughs> Wednesday she'll race at um, at Northfield Park, as will Love and Affection. Marching fourth races today at uh, the Meadows. I'm going over to drive him in the mud. Mel Gibswan trains tomorrow. Memory and Imagination is back at the barn now jogging. Mounds for All is getting ever so closer to racing, I believe, at uh, in Ontario. And Pickpocket raced great yesterday at the Meadows. I was happy with him. Purple People Eater will race right up until sale time on December 17th. That's when that sale is. Uh, ready for landing. A little flat yesterday. We'll see if he bounces back next week. I suspect he will. His start before he was a winner in 55. Um, Tenacious Handle racing today. Really don't care. I jumped over. She's at the facility uh, getting prepped for the sale, as is Hallie in the Clouds, as I just said. Tenacious Handle races today in the mud, it looks like. Hopefully not too muddy, but an off track at the Meadows. Uh, time is on my side. We'll come back in in the next couple of days. He'll start back up for Tim. We'll race him in the non at 10. Now, he may have to race at the Meadows for a little bit because uh, Megan pointed out to me the last time we spoke that there's a, a bit of a break at, uh, at Yonkers around Christmas time for three or four weeks. So I'll look at the timeline for that. But I suspect you're going to see time is on my side show up at Yonkers um, definitely in the early parts of 2025. Vehement is in here with the rail on Tuesday, just wasn't getting in. Remember the maiden numbers of two, three, it's all littered with PA owned and bred horses first and foremost in the Meadows right now. So we could not get her in to go. Could not get him in to go. Um, he got in to go here with the rail on Tuesday. Uh, Watch Your Mouth will be racing at Northfield Park in the next few weeks. He started back jogging. I might train him a slow mile tomorrow, see how he feels. Brace for Landing will race again at the Meadows next week. I was very happy with the way he raced. Save America raced good in the open. He drops down now out of the open uh, for his next start or two. Spitfire Overseas is making his way back to the open at uh, Dayton. Tactical Mounds. Uh, a lot of discussions going on behind the scenes with Tactical Mounds right now. My two cents was that she's done forever. 
I would simply take the harness off her and get her started to get her ready for breeding season that's coming up. Um, uh, I know we had been in discussion with a couple of the firms, not by we, Rick has been in discussion with a couple of firms. I've spoke to a couple of firms and I suspect there's going to be an offer. Um, uh, I suspect there's going to be an offer coming down uh, coming down the road soon on tactical mounds, but we'll see. Tech Song Soprano races tonight at the Meadowlands. Uh, good luck to Scotty and Megan there. Uh, greatest ending, a little flat, but getting back into shape in Dayton. JK Victory will be coming out of the field in the next 48 hours, along with Time is on my side. We're going to bring JK Victory back over here to get him ready again. Time will stay over with, uh, with Tim. Um, where are we at here? Greatest energy. Looks like money raced good the other day. He's found himself back up into the open uh, this week. We'll see how he races. Uh, Neptune is training down now in Ontario, training good. Harry said he's acting extremely steady, is what he said. Nelly said, Is there any chance we can castrate Neptune? I said, Well, I wouldn't attempt it if I were you, but you can certainly get the veterinarian to do it. Absolutely. There's no, it's no reason for him not to be castrated. So I did check with Daniel and Rob in Australia. There's no objections to Neptune being castrated, so he'll be castrated right away. Yes, it will prolong his training uh, a little longer than we liked, but as I said, I'm not overly worried about that. This horse is going to be a good horse for us when we get him racing. Just need to do it right. Rock Shining Star raced good yesterday. He drops way down in class now. Uh, we'll see how he does moving forward. Three Point Blue Chip is in today at Dayton. So good luck to Lauren and Kane. I believe Kane is driving him. Um, hopefully he races well. Troisa is getting ready in Ontario also. Yo, Mister is my first drive of the day at 1.30 today. I'm going to let him rock. You can be sure of that. Old Yo, Mister will be raced today at the Meadows. Chevron's bypass. Give her three weeks off. Jason did get her blood back. It was a mess. Red counts were all screwed up. Her white count was high. Showed that she had bled a little bit. Scoped her. In fact, she did bleed a tiny bit again. There was mucus and redness in there. She was a bit of a mess. So the three weeks off is well warranted for her. Who you got there? Solidarity. Oh, Solidarity. Here you go. Solidarity walking out to the track. That's the big um, the big colt at a kissing in the sand by Tall Dark Stranger. That's Tyler Angus, by the way. He works for us riding some horses in the mornings. Uh, he likes that horse and he goes with every single day. Uh, really like what we see in Solidarity thus far. now. he's not even gated, doesn't have hobbles on, hasn't trained, but looks really, really nice on the track. And is a smart horse, as you can see him just walking up to the track today. Um, Delicious Stone DK starts back on Saturday. We'll know within days of the situation regarding his airway. He had made some noise. He had had an entrapment. He was a mess too. All in here, they took the uh, operator, took the membrane out down here, which is uh, pretty standard when you're doing the, those types of surgeries. But is his airway going to rebound? Uh, if it doesn't rebound, then we'll probably have to figure out what we're doing with him. But we'll see what happens with Delicious Stone. As I said, we'll know before the middle of next week where he stands and what we're doing with him. And Patrick the Prana raced absolutely great yesterday to finish sixth. Uh, not very often you're gonna see praise from a sixth place finish, but I like the way he accelerated through the wire. Horse is nine going on 10, raced as much as him. He knows where the wire is, right? Some of them dog it going through the middle. They'll give you a, a feeling like they're gonna, and then right at the wire, they'll kind of let go. They know where the wire is. He paced hard right through the wire yesterday. So he's sitting on a good mile. My only issue, and, and Jason and I had a discussion, and it's to be continued, uh, what do we do with him next week? To race him, if Save America drops down, they're in the same class. Something's gotta give. The only option we'll likely have is to move Patrick DePrana up just a hair into the backup class, or we can tag him for 50 which won't be the end of the world. We had bought him back for 43 or 44. Uh, Tim's horse yesterday sold for 52, 52 or 54. The double metal horse, that was the horse I was bidding on yesterday, by the way, but I wasn't gonna go to 52 when uh, we bought Patrick back for 43. So um, I think that's a fair place and a fair price to put Patrick in and on. Um, so if we have to price him, so be it. I'm just trying to figure out where the best spot is. I would love nothing more than to see the same four horses 
uh, race there for the next little while on Thursday, Save America, Rock Shining Star, Patrick, greatest ending. I would love to see those horses find spots. As Jason said, and he pointed out very carefully and properly, we're not going to be having them tripping over each other. It makes no sense to have two in the same class all the time. So where are they going to race if greatest ending is, he's got to drop down too. So if they're going to get in a position where there's going to be two in the same class, we will move one of them. Uh, but for now, I don't know which one that is, and I don't know which way they'll go. So we'll see. 35-minute update on uh, Friday morning for you. I just thought it made all the sense in the world. I was going to give you a little bit. May as well give you all of it. What do you got there, Joe? Sweet Lake. Sweet Lake. There is uh, Sweet Lake. That is um, the sister to, uh, what's his name? You guys know his name. Uh, raced against time is on my side. Finished second in the elimination. Finished ninth in the final. Captain Luke. That is Captain Luke's sister right there uh, heading out to jog. As you can see, the track's muddy. I'm off to the meadows. I hope you guys are having a good start to your day. Good luck to all my partners today. To well, not tomorrow. We're not racing anything tomorrow. I'll bring you your videos tomorrow. Maybe, well, you'll get them on Sunday, but I'll do them tomorrow. A lot of horses training, a lot of updates for tomorrow as we head into the winter portion of our racing season. Take care.